Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and today I want to talk to you in my little rant about taxes and more specifically about a particular tax which has vexed me for many years, confused me and uh, caused my poor suffering wife a lot of problems when she's had to do those dreaded VAT returns. VAT, value added tax as we call it. VAT for short. The whole business was dreamed up to simplify taxation. Let's just have a quick look at VAT and how it works. We've got a cement manufacturer here who is producing bags of cement and he's charging one pound per bag. Happy days, eh? Wouldn't you love to buy your cement for one pound a bag? So he's charging one pound a bag for his cement but because he's VAT registered, obviously he's making a lot of cement, he's got to charge his 20% when he sells it to the merchant. So the merchant is buying that cement for £1.20. So £1.20, that's 20p for every bag of cement into the government's coffers. And the merchant is buying that cement for £1, but now he wants to sell that cement on to the customer, to, the, to his builder, for £2. So he's got to charge VAT on the £2. So he's going to give the government 40 pence when he sells that cement but he's going to claim 20 pence back of it because that's the 20 pence that he paid the supplier for the cement so therefore the builder is now here with his bag of cement which he's paid two quid for but he's going to pass it on to his customer so he's paid his two pounds for that which includes the two pound 40 so so the builder has paid his two pound 40 for that that means he's going to get back the 40 pence vat that he's paid to the government but then he passes it on to his customer and because He's VAT registered, he's got his 40 pence back from the government. He's going to sell that onto the customer for four pounds. So the customer is going to pay four pounds to the builder for his bag of cement. So because it's a consumer tax, the builder is going to charge his customer four pounds 80. So the builder is going to pay his 80 pence into the HMRC, but he's going to have gained 40 pence back from that. At every point where you add value to the goods, you have to charge the VAT. So if that builder wasn't VAT registered, he would have been paying that VAT on his cement. He would have passed the cost onto the customer as four pounds and he wouldn't have been able to reclaim it back. But it gets more complicated because we've got two builders here. We've got Joe and we've got Bill. Joe here, he's not registered for VAT because he's managed to keep himself below the magic threshold of £85,000. He doesn't charge his customer VAT. So here's his customer looking very happy because he doesn't have to pay VAT. That same customer, Joe's busy one day. He thinks, do you know what? I need this job doing urgently. I'm going to use Bill down the road. Bill's as good as Joe. So he says to Bill, how much do you want for this job? And Bill said, well, I'm going to charge you whatever. Same sort of price as Joe. He said, but of course, I'm going to have to charge you 20% VAT. So the customer... He's not quite so happy now. And he says, I don't want to pay the 20% to the government for a job. I could have got Joe to do it. Wouldn't have had to pay anything. How's that fair? That's not fair, is it? He says to Bill, what can you do about that? And Bill goes, well, I suppose what I could do is uh, you could pay me cash and we'll just forget the VAT. And it happens all the time, as we know. So it's a trap of the governments and, as you say, the EU's own making, if you like, in as much as they have this threshold. They decided on the threshold because they said it at £85,000 turnover. Joe has managed to stay below that turnover by passing those material costs directly to the customer rather than putting through his books. Bill's been a little bit more straightforward, a bit more honest. He's put all his material costs, all his labour through his books, but he's now saddled with having to charge all his customers an extra 20%. That isn't a fair situation. So the government is losing out big time on this because a lot of people are still paying cash for building work to avoid the VAT. The way that they will probably get around this because they need the money, don't forget that, they really need the money at the moment, is they're likely to lower that threshold. 
This is just a guess. Say they bring it down to £60,000, and which Joe can't legitimately claim to trade below. Say he may still be, so maybe actually £60,000 is not right. Maybe they bring it down to £40,000 turnover, don't forget. And therefore, Joe and Bill will be on an equal level playing field. It means that they're both liable to charge VAT to the customer. But of course, the customer doesn't really see the social benefits of paying taxes. I don't want to pay this 20% VAT. What can you do for me, Joe? What can you do for me, Bill? Same, same thing, isn't it? Well, what I can do for you is you can pay me cash and then the government won't know. So therefore, whatever happens, the government is losing out. So these customers who have these bleeding hearts about all these companies that are getting away with not having to pay corporations tax because of their offshore activities are in themselves perfectly happy to take a little bit of tax-free advantage themselves. You see it all the time. I've even seen it with people like politicians who will willingly pay cash to a builder or put it through on parliamentary expenses just by fiddling the invoice slightly. We know that happens. So that's the first inequity that we get. Joe and Bill and all those other builders who are totally confused and they're inclined not to pay any more tax than they have to. And who can blame them for that? Let's just have a look at one more oddity of the VAT system. And that is that some things are liable for VAT and others aren't. And what we have in the way of zero rated goods is things that the government would deem essential items. So what's an essential item? Food is an essential item, therefore it's zero rated for VAT. But of course, we had the famous case of the pasty tax a few years ago, where they said that food which is heated up is a luxury item. You don't need it hot, you could have eaten it cold. So even though a pasty comes out of the oven hot, it's designed to be sold Cold. Of course, if you're lucky enough to get into the bakers just as the pasties come out, you grab one and say, well, careful, it's hot. <gasps> Too late. But anyway, that is a food that's designed to be cold and it just happened to be hot by accident. But if you ask that vendor of the pasties, that baker, say, could you heat it up for me? Can you wang it in a microwave for a few minutes? Strictly speaking, it was liable for VAT. Now, the government tried to level the playing field and charge 20% on takeaway pasties because they thought it was a luxury item and, of course, a complete Ferrari and uh, they had to climb down from it. George Osborne had to lick his wounds and go away and say, Thou shalt not touch the pasty. Jaffa cakes, one of the nation's favourite biscuits. Did I say biscuit? No, no, no. McVitie's, who make the Jaffa cake, actually went to court to say that a Jaffa cake is not a luxury item, it is a food item. It's not a biscuit, even though it's got a lovely chocolate coating on it. They were saying it's food, it's not a biscuit, it's cake, therefore it's zero rated. And the government was saying, no, it's not, it's a luxury item, it's a biscuit and it, you don't need it to survive. It's something you buy to entertain yourself, to give yourself pleasure, and therefore we're going to charge you the VAT, or you've got to charge the VAT on that. The poor old jury had to sit there for days on end listening to all this evidence and munching on Jaffa cakes and saying, is this a biscuit? Is this a cake? And the jury very wisely came to the decision that a Jaffa cake is in fact a cake. The clue's in the name. The Jaffa cake was exempt from the VAT. It was considered food and remains so to this day. But other people have tried to jump on the tail to the Jaffa cake and sneak their luxury items, their chocolate biscuits through and all their other things through as cakes and haven't succeeded. So it hasn't created a precedent for all people who say that you can get these things through. So what I would say to you is generally, if it's got chocolate on the top, it's a luxury item. Try this one. Clothes are a luxury item. So there's a difference between adults' clothes and kids' clothes. The naked rambler who famously tried to walk from John O'Groats to Land's End entirely naked and was harassed by police along the way, arrested, charged with indecent exposure, which seems to suggest that there's such a thing as decent exposure, which I suppose uh, put a bit of tinsel around it, you'd probably get away with it. He was charged. He missed the trick there because what he should have done is said, according to the HMRC, Clothes are, for the adult, a luxury item. I rest my case, Your Honour. In fact, he could have taken it to the European Court of Human Rights and he could have said that it is a luxury item as deemed for VAT purposes and therefore 
I don't have to wear it. I reckon he could have won that case. So kids clothes are deemed to be an essential item. When does a kid become an adult? What is the cut off point for kids clothing when suddenly you have to start paying 20% because it's thrown up this problem. And if you look in the legislation, there's a great long chart, of all the sizes, which are kid sizes. And it comes down to things like waist sizes. So if you've got a fat kid, does that mean that the fat kid's got to pay the 20% VAT? Because then that becomes a fat tax. They have to have these cut off points. There are cases where you get waist sizes, you get size sizes in clothing, but you also get elasticated waist. What a fine thing that elasticated waist is. How do you measure an elasticated waist? Well, according to the legislation, you have to expand it to its full stretch, and then you have to measure it. When it's stretched, an adult size, and when it's not stretched, it's a kid size, then you have to say it's an adult size, and therefore it's liable for 20% VAT. Kids' shoes obviously throw up the same kind of problem, and you do get people who have got one foot which is larger than than another. They have the unfortunate situation of just going into the adult sizes on one foot, but not on the other. And what do they do there? Pay 20% on the right foot, but zero on the left foot. No, the government's thought of that and they say, we're going to tax them on the smaller of the two feet. It is a fact that a lot of the country before COVID didn't even know what PPE was. They had no idea. Personal protective equipment. We know that. Everyone knows that now. The face mask. If you are a private buyer, of you're just an ordinary citizen, you're not VAT registered, you don't run a business, and you're buying face masks for your personal use, the government actually made face masks zero rated for a limited period to get us over the worst of the COVID crisis. So if, for example, somebody like me who's VAT registered was buying face masks, I can claim that 20% tax back from the government through my books as a legitimate business expense. But the interesting thing there is that if I use that face mask for private use, then I have to pay the 20% VAT on it. And I look forward to the day when we have inspectors lurking in car parks, seeing me going shopping with a face mask on, which I've bought for my business, but I'm using for my private use. They would spring out upon me and say, We've caught you avoiding VAT. So it sounds ridiculous, but they've been doing it for years where they've been stalking people in car parks, you know, builders coming in in vans and saying, oh, you're using that for your private use. You're going shopping in it. It's supposed to be a business van. You're claiming 100% tax relief on it as a business expense. And now we find you're going shopping with it. You could even look at something like the mobile phone and think, hang on a minute, it's a business expense. I'm allowed to have it. I'm allowed to claim the VAT back on it. I'm allowed to claim the VAT back on my phone calls and therefore you have to work out how many of your phone calls are private and how many of them are business and pay a percentage on it and of course that's not all about VAT that's about business expenses anyway but you get the idea PPE is zero rated except for some items for some people cycle helmets they come into the zero rated thing which is a great thing because I'm a cyclist also things like safety boots are zero rated so if you're going out to a building site you don't have to pay VAT on your safety boots except if they're safety shoes because they've deemed a safety boot to be a PPE essential item, but a safety shoe to be a fashion item. In other words, you could be wearing that safety shoe to the pub on a Friday night in your safety shoes. You're getting private use out of them. So they're saying a safety shoe is not zero rated, but a safety boot is. They would also say that a cycle helmet, regardless of whether it's a child or an adult, zero rated. Whereas a child restraint in a car, like a child seat, is actually liable for VAT at the reduced rate of 5%. So what they're saying there is even though it's required by law in a car, is not quite as essential as a cycle helmet. The law doesn't require you to wear a cycle helmet. It does require you to strap your kids in. They're going to charge you 5% VAT for their privilege. So what they're kind of saying is it's an essential item, but it's got an element of luxury in it. The whole thing just gets more and more complicated. The further you go into it, the worse it gets. Because this all sounds so complicated and because most people just groan when they hear about VAT, that the government would take the opportunity to do away with it as we've left the EU but of course we are bound by certain rules because we cut the deal with the EU so we have to continue to charge VAT and administer VAT as we did 
did before, which I don't think is any bad thing. We need taxes. We're going to have to carry on paying taxes. And because of the huge debt we've incurred over COVID, we're going to have to pay more because all those people have been taking those payments, self-employed people have been taking those payments and still going out working for cash are going to have to pay that back one way or another. At some point, it's going to come home to roost. So let's not think we're going to get away with it. And if you're a younger person, a millennial or what, Z generation or whatever you are, and you feel that this is terribly unfair that you're going to be saddled with this debt for years to come and have to pay higher taxes as a result of all the lockdown and all the precautions we took to protect old people from COVID. Console yourself with the thought that when I was growing up, we had to pay for the debt from the Second World War. And that was a considerable amount of money. And that money, of course, was loaned to us by the Americans in as much as they provided us with armaments. And they said, don't bother paying us today, guys. You can pay us later. No problem. Just have the tanks, have the guns, beat Hitler, and then pay us back at your leisure, which of course turned out to be the entire rest of the century and a little bit more. I'm Roger Bisbee. Come back and see me soon and I'll have more ranting for you in the near future. I think.